pikas are doing better here in the southern Rocky Mountains than they're doing in other regions like the Great Basin. We documented that 65 of 69 populations were still intact. So the biggest thing is that they're doing better here than elsewhere, which is great news. Uh, but the other main point is that those places where pikas were missing here in the Rockies, weren't, it wasn't a random pattern. Uh, the places where pikas were missing were the driest locations or among the driest locations. We get a little bit lucky with pikas. They're, they're easier to detect than your average animal, I'd say. When we go to a site, the first thing to do is to determine if pikas are there. Pikas, being very charismatic and terrier-like, um, will usually call right away. Our crew systematically searches for signs of pikas, including hay, pikas themselves, and their scat, which is really distinctive. We're going to use these tweezers to grab the poop, and then stick it in this envelope, we'll close up the envelope and we'll label the envelope with a waypoint and a location so we know exactly where this came from. Since they don't hibernate, they have to collect food that they feed off of in the winter. Um, we call that a hay pile. One thing we need to be aware of with the pika is that it's somewhat a canary in the coal mine. It's sort of raising the flag that says, hey guys, we've got, we've got a concern here. While the loss of a pika isn't going to affect our everyday lives, the things that are leading to the loss of the pika, for example, loss of snowpack, is something that directly affects our water sources. So it's really an indicator saying, hey, the watersheds could be in trouble, for example. So it's something we need to monitor, be careful, uh, to keep an eye on, especially in those locations that might be getting hotter or drier. Ecology is a complex discipline. Um, it's all about the interactions between the environment and species, and so that's something that can be hard to wrap your head around in the classroom. And when you get out there, you start to realize, oh, here's a really wet area, and the plants look different here than they do over there. Oh, and the pikas tend to live closer to that wet stuff. You can put all that together in the field in a way that I don't think you can in the classroom.